excited to have you and we're really excited that the vision of these laboratories came to fruition and um, and really are exceptional in their nature and I know a lot of you here either worked on them or, or helped donate monies towards them um, and the structures that are here in the labs but it is terrific that our students can have exceptional technology and simulation materials to really give them confidence before they go out in the field so um, I really want to thank everyone who has been a contributor to this. And I'm, because we have a program, I'm going to turn it over to our president, Dr. Marcia, Marcia Keys, who will give the welcome with you. Okay. So welcome, everyone. So welcome, welcome. Welcome to one of our brand new simulated nursing labs. And there are many, many people to thank. And I'm going to do my welcome in two parts. Uh, the first part is going to be a little bit of reflection in that some of this started back in about 2006. And the idea was that we had just gotten our reaccreditation, if I remember right, uh, of our regular BSN program. We had very different people around the room at that time. And there was a discussion about where the, where the goest thou, as it were, in nursing. And some people wanted to go in the direction of a master's program, and some other people wanted to go in the direction of a generic nursing program, which brought freshmen into the pool, fresh folk, if you will, into the generic nursing program. And those who wished to do that won out in the first run, which doesn't mean that the master's people won't win. They just had to win later. <laughs> so in winning first, if you will, with the fresh uh, the first year students, we started to dream about what needed to be done. And of course, we needed programs, a new program, a new curriculum. We also needed some new faculty. We needed a director. We needed resources to support that. And of course, we needed to dream about the facility. And this is the facility we dreamt about back then in 2006 and have been working towards. And so we're really thrilled to be here to welcome you to this facility and to say that it is actually in progress, it is actually being used today with our nursing students. And as we dreamt, we had to bring other people along because you can have those wonderful dreams and no resources to fulfill the dreams. And there was a lot of talent and a lot of hard work that went in. And so my second part of my welcome is sort of to give you a roll call of the people who helped. And so I want to do a roll call mentioning, um, in no particular order, please, uh, all with due respect who helped. Gertler and Wente, who were the architects, Jimena Blanco and Jeff Wente, the contractor, Manhattan Contracting Group, the Office of the Facilities, uh, the Vice Chancellor for Facilities at the Central Office, starting with our own Vice Chancellor, Iris Weinschel, and you will hear from her later. Uh, I'm just going to mention some last names, Perlman, Lemieux, Williams, MacPizer, who is not able to be here today, Hill, and Verley. At York College, of course, individuals like Professor Weida Murray, it's so good to see you, Weida. I'm glad you're able to come because I know you haven't been that well, so it's really good to have you. Dane Dina, uh, Dean Dina Fusco, who I don't think is here, Robert Brugna, Joanne Lavin, Noel Gumbo, who is on leave, Dr. Lynn Clark, of course our own buildings and grounds, our IT people, our public safety, our purchasing, our own provost, our own current VP Thomas, our own past VP Polsman, let's not forget him in the mix, even though he's gone on to other things. And then, of course, some of the people who are in the room and others who are not in the room who've helped us with the resources. We want to particularly acknowledge some of them in the room, our own Leroy Comrie, our councilman, our own borough president, Marshall. I have to mention Assemblywoman Cook, who really was kind of up there at the front end, 
helping us significantly with some serious dollars that helped us in this project and in others. And we overcame a number of obstacles, but here we are today, celebrating the opening of this two nursing labs. And we have the symbol of the labs, the people who will be served right here, and you're going to hear from him later, one of our students. And we've got how many in the cohort, Joanne? 20 in the cohort. So to all of those who helped us along the way, all of those who are here today to celebrate, greetings and welcome. Greetings on behalf of our almost 8,000 students, our 210 faculty, our staff. We're really delighted to have you with us today to celebrate this moment. Let's carry on with the program. Thank you, Dr. Keyes. Um, I, next on the program, and these are going to be remarks from different individuals, is Iris Weintal, who is the uh, actually CUNY's Vice Chancellor of Facilities and Planning. Yes, she's right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Here. <laughs> Thank you, and good e afternoon to everybody. Afternoon. I was going to say good morning, but it's not the morning yet. Um, and first off, I want to thank President Keyes for inviting me this afternoon and for really her dynamic leadership, not only in this project, but for this campus. And I think she really deserves a round of applause. <laughs> and I'm truly honored to be a part of today's um, celebration, this ribbon cutting for this extraordinary nursing and simulation lab here at York College. I am enormously proud to have been part of this project, which marks a significant expansion for York and its already excellent nursing program. Today we celebrate the completion of approximately 6,000 square feet of renovated space, and let me tell you, that's a lot of, a lot of space, of that's a lot of space to renovate in a very modern way. And all existing classrooms and storage rooms have been demolished and replaced with new spaces built to serve the department's current needs and to support the program's future development. I also want to thank the architects, uh, Gertler and Wenty. I don't know if they're here. Um, yes, there they are. They should stand up because they have really done a great job here. And this truly was an exceptional design team um, uh, for this really beautiful space. Uh, particularly impressive are the new nursing simulation laboratories. In these labs, students will have the opportunity to encounter the situations and challenges that will one day face them in a true hospital setting. But for now, with the latest technology, they can do it right here in the educational setting. Uh, thanks are due to uh, Laridol, the chief manufacturers of the medical equipment that we're using here, who work closely with York's nursing faculty to ensure that all requirements and goals were met. And the results are pretty amazing. Uh, the two main labs hold a total of 20 beds between them. These beds are occupied by patients awaiting treatment, as they would be in any hospital, either in the city or in, in the world. In a third lab, the maternal child unit, specifically des designated for pediatric training, there will be cribs and also they will be holding patients. But in this case, patients are extremely high-tech mannequins life-sized and computer-controlled, programmed to exhibit symptoms and respond to treatment. Students will be able to practice techniques on these faux patients in a controlled setting, gaining invaluable hands-on experience. They will evaluate real-life scenarios in real time and decide how to proceed, and they will get feedback in the form of a patient response. In addition, they'll have the guidance and assistance of the truly wonderful faculty here at York. Each bed is equipped with monitoring devices which are wired to a central nursing station where faculty can watch. These labs are simply the best that medical training has to offer today. I'm so excited to be here as we mark this pivotal moment in York's nursing program. And I want to acknowledge just a few more of the many people who contributed to this project's success. I want to thank our general contractor, MCG, for working with diligence to complete this project and acting with concern for the nursing program while still operating in their ne nearby space. I also want to thank York's faculty and staff for your flexibility and resourcefulness during the period of transition. 
And thank you to Vice President Ron Thomas, is Ron here? At the door. And Director of Campus Planning and Facilities, uh, Noel Gam Gamboa, for ex excellent stewardship of this project. I'm also proud to acknowledge my excellent staff. Um, I always say I stand up here and I make the speeches, but it's really my staff that does all the work. Uh, Bob Lemieux, who's our Executive Director of uh, Design and Construction at CUNY. Uh, Gwen Perlman and Bruce Henning, who work in our Capital Budget Office, and they're the ones who put all the money together. And when we come up a little bit short, they always figure out how we're going to fund it. And Max Pizer, who's our Assistant Director here at York, and Project Managers Michelle Williams, who happens to be out on maternity leave, and William Hill. And finally, I really must pay tribute to Queensborough President Helen Marshall, without whose unfailing support today, this would not have been possible. Thank you, Helen, for your commitment and your energy in bringing together the resources to give York this necessary and inspiring facility. Thank you. This is a nice introduction in uh, for the Honorable Helen Marshall, uh, the, our Queensborough President. I'd like to make remarks to you. Okay, yes, I remember. <laughs> You know why all this is possible? Because the president of this college has turned it around 100%. I remember, I remember when she was, you know, when she was sworn in, um, she said that I will not be sworn in until Valentine's Day because I love what I'm going to do. And she has really done so well. She gave us a tour of this, my staff, a few of my staff members and I, and it is just wonderful. It's only one of her miracles, okay? And Iris, let me tell you, she's in charge, and she yeah. really gets things done. She moves them along. And the thing is that she loves it, and we love that she loves it, okay? <laughs> because we must have that kind of leadership in the hospital. This hospital was really, um, it's, not, not the hospital, I just left the hospital, uh, but um, she really understands what to do. And I want to tell you a little history about her, because she was the acting president of this college way back then. And she worked with um, Congressman Flake to get the Food and Drug Administration on campus here. And mind you, she was just the acting, uh, acting president. But you can't be, according to the rules of CUNY, you cannot be acting and then become the permanent um, direct uh, uh, president of the college. And so we were very, very glad. And I remember, I was, the I was the founding chair of the higher ed committee in the city council, OK? And when the chancellor called me up to tell me that he was going to appoint her, but, um, for, I, I almost screamed through the, through the telephone, OK? But she really did a great job. And she has shown this community and the world what can really be done when you have inspiration. She has brilliance. She's smart as anything. And I'm so glad that she's here in Queens. Okay. Thank you so much. Whatever she asks me, I'm like everybody else. Whatever she asks me, I pay for it, OK? Out of your money. <laughs> Um, and it's spent very well, okay? Thank you very much. You. God bless this God bless this room. Um, and I also, the next speaker um, I'm getting very familiar with, who is our Dean of Health and, and Human Services for the CUNY system. And he has really been one, too, that has vetted and really supported the development of the nursing program and also this laboratory. Uh, Bill Wood. Evanstein. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. It, it really is a great day, and I want to acknowledge uh, President Keyes and Prov Provost Griffith. And uh, it's a great day for York. It's a great day for Queens. Uh, Queens is so important for uh, uh, the area of health in many ways, but in the area of health profession programs with their nursing and fit, uh, physician assistant programs, occupational therapy, and so on. Uh, Joanne Levin, the new, uh, the rel how long have you been here now? Year and a half. Year and a half, a relatively new <laughs> chair of the nursing program. And I think that decision, of course, to move to the generic baccalaureate program in Queens, the, the only generic baccalaureate program at a public institution in Queens, is very much symbolic of what the role that York must play in Queens uh, as a public institution. The simulation lab, 
the further integration of uh, technology into nurse education, which is happening all around the country and is critical. You cannot move forward unless you have uh, simulation capabilities and other technologies which can be wrapped around this. Uh, and uh, it's really just, just here to acknowledge a great day and to acknowledge your college and uh, its important role in the health professions for, for Queens in particular. So thank you very much. Thank you. And the next person to make comments is the person who spent her summer here making sure things were getting done too. Um, is our really our program director of the nursing program, Dr. Joanne Lavin. President Keyes, Provost Griffith, Borough President Marshall, Vice Chancellor Weinshall, Dean Ebenstein, Dean Clark, honored guests, faculty, staff, and students. I've been privileged to help start the generic nursing program here at York College, the only generic baccalaureate in nursing program in Queens. A recent landmark report from the Institute of Medicine included a recommendation that the proportion of nurses with a baccalaureate degree increased to 80% by 2020. That's less than 10 years from now. York College's BSM program, both the generic and the RN completion program, are crucial to accomplishing this goal. And these labs are an essential component of our program. There are many, many people who, who added or helped to make these labs a reality. Whether they designed the spaces, ordered equipment, moved furniture in, set up state-of-the-art electronics, managed the construction, or provided funding, each person made this dream a reality. And I would like to acknowledge the CUNY and York College campus facility directors and staff, all of the buildings and grounds and housekeeping, the York College IT director and all of his staff for all of their work. As we all know, the healthcare today is very complex. Patients have multiple problems, and often their care requires the use of sophisticated high-tech equipment. There is a limited availability of clinical experiences available to nursing students. Some we can understand. If a patient's condition is not stable, if they're in shock, students are not going to be caring for that patient. Others are dependent on availability. A woman, when she delivers, often it's in the middle of the night, not when students are on the unit. So these labs will allow our nursing faculty to provide authentic learning experiences here on campus. We now have a realistic long-term care facility down the hall. We have an acute care. We have a pediatric, a maternity, and a critical care unit so that our students can learn all of the skills and can practice as often as necessary so that when they enter the healthcare environment as a registered nurse, they will feel confident of their abilities and their skills. The nursing faculty are currently developing a variety of patient scenarios so that every student will work with a critically ill simulated patient and have the opportunity to think critically, analyze patient data, which are essential nursing skills. As the York College nursing faculty continue to educate the future nurses of Queens, it is very gratifying to know that we have all of your support. So again, thank you all so much. And someone who can tell you firsthand what the nursing labs means to him is one of our first BSN class students, uh, Michael Campbell. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, for coming to this magnificent ribbon cutting ceremony. And ever since I was in the 12th grade, I knew I wanted to pursue a career. Ever since the um, 12th grade, I knew I wanted to pursue a career in which I can care for individuals who are ill and well. And I knew that nursing would be the um, exact profession in which I can go into. Also. Caring for them is one thing, but also teaching them. Learning not only to just care, but if I can teach them how to live, how to like modify their diet and something, and like so. Most likely, their um, blood pressure, for example, will go down, which is one of the main leading cause of death among um, like the community. Also, 
ever since like knowing that your college is a wonderful community, um, wonderful school, I knew that and always heard that your college would um, come up with a nursing program with a simulation lab. And I knew that with a simulation lab, I'd be able to practice my skills on someone who is just about, not human, of course, but it act just like a human, in which I could make, like, practice, 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 so that when I go out into the field, into the hospital, into the, um, the nursing home, I know for sure I'll be confident in my skills. And I thank everyone for coming, and thank you. <laughs>Introduce our provost, um, Rob Brugna, Dr. Brugna. Could you just stand for a minute? The nursing program is in the Department of Health Professions, and Dr. Brugna is the chair. I just want to acknowledge him. <laughs> and last, we've asked Provost Griffith, our senior vice president of academic affairs, to uh, sort of give a summary of his feelings about this lab and what he's heard today. Round of applause for the dean. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's try it again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One more time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. One of the things about being a political scientist who also becomes a provost is that you have an opportunity to sometimes not only applaud people, but put them on the spot. And I want to take the opportunity of putting Leroy Comrie on the spot uh, by inviting our councilman, who is a member of the community, not only of Queens, but of your college. Come and say a few words, Leroy. Round of applause. Oh, wow. uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm pleased to be here as we celebrate another um, milestone in the development of your college to be the best CUNY school in Queens, if not the city. So uh, I'm, I'm just pleased that we are doing this. Clearly the need for um, nurses and the need for well-qualified and well-trained nurses has been documented and is a, there's a need and we now have an opportunity to have it right here in our community is, is a wonderful addition. So I'm just pleased to be part of whatever we need to do to make York to be a school of choice for everyone. Thank you. Thanks, thank you, Councilman. And, and with that, he knows we're going to send him a bill for something. Uh, just know it's on, it's on the way. Now, doc, Dr. Brugner and other faculty in nursing may have heard me. I see uh, some of our, our colleagues from nursing here. so. They may have heard me say before that I consider myself a nurse by osmosis because my wife is a nurse. And I've got a deep appreciation to pick up on what Michael said, not only of the importance of the clinical aspects of nursing being done well, but the whole nurse. And I remember saying to a, a student who I had a year ago as a mentee, she was a nursing student, and in our second meeting, I gave to her a copy of the season program for Performing Arts Center. And I said to her, take this, pick out a couple of performances you want to go. I'll get tickets for you if your mom wants to come. And she said to me, Provost, I don't have to do that. I'm a nurse. I said, that's exactly why you have to do it. We don't want our nurses who only know nursing in technical terms. I said to her, your patients don't want to talk about the diseases. They want to talk about the soap opera. They want to talk about sports. They want to talk about something that happens on Broadway. They want to reminisce about their humanness. I say all of that to say that it's important that Michael takes to all his colleague students that while this facility is dynamo and it will help do what they expect, don't neglect the other part of your education. And the other part of your education is to take full advantage of what York has to offer in general. And what it has to offer in general are wonderful opportunities to be involved in clubs, performing arts. If there isn't a club that you like, form one. 
get involved in the cardinal sports. Don't think of nursing only in narrow technical terms because your patients want to do much more than talk about why they're ill, when they're going to get better. They want to reminisce about their humanness and maybe have hopes about recovering earlier so they can get back to some of the things they did, whether drama, art, sports, or otherwise. This is necessary, this is great, but don't forget your education is not only about the simulation labs. My second point is really a point of thanks, but I want to put that point of thanks in a context, and if you get a chance, visitors, to walk across campus, you might see posters with some of what is, are called Provo's favorite quotes. And we'll be putting up a couple new quotes this year. We'll be having one from Bob Marley. We'll be having one from Mother Teresa. We'll be having one from Nelson Mandela. But we'll also be having one from a, Sp a Spanish philosopher called Jorge Santayana. And I love ever since my college freshman year, didn't understand what he was talking about then, something that George Santayana said in a book called Skepticism and Animal Faith. And he said, if you really want to know what people think, don't pay attention to what they say. Pay attention to what they do. And I think this is evidence of what York, CUNY, the public officials think. We have done something that will enhance the educational value of our students. And the we include Leroy Cymru. A round of applause for Leroy. The we include Helen Marshall. A round of applause for Helen. The we include Shirley Huntley, who is here through Timothy James. A round of applause for Shirley. The we include Councilman Ruben Wills. Let's give him a round of applause. And we've got many more of the family who've contributed to making evidence by what we do, really of what we think, what we believe. We couldn't get this done in spite of the fact that Iris was giving applause to everybody else. We couldn't get this done without Iris's leadership, the leadership of her team. So let's give a round of applause and appreciation to Iris. Surely we also know the indefatigable work that our own facilities management and our own budget people and our own people who do the hiring and the, of, of all the facilities arrangements. I remember last fall, lots of conversations given the deadlines, given the limitations of the funding sources, Purchasing director was a critical part. We need to get him on the phone. So there are many parts of the we. And although we can acknowledge each of those individuals individually, I just want to have VP Thomas on our collective behalf to share with all members on his team, not just the facilities part and the architects part, but all the people who are working behind the scenes to really show what they really mean by what they have been able to do. The president referred to Weida, and I hadn't seen Weida for a long time. I was kidding with her that uh, now that she's a big shot retired person, she's heading off to Florida and Atlanta all the time. But it's delightful to see people who were there at the beginning of the journey, a faculty who were there at the end of the journey, but really critical to helping, to helping this make, to help make this a reality. So I want to thank directors of the past, deans of the past, Dana Fusco, current dean, and all of our colleagues Joanne Laving often is described as a steal, at least I describe her as a steal, and we were delighted to steal her away from another institution that shall be nameless uh, because it's wonderful once she got here, she got involved, got the faculty involved, and thanks to Maria Elena, thanks to, uh, I don't see anybody else uh, from the nursing faculty, but I'm sure they're there. Claudette. Cla Claudette is their recent, recent uh, acquisition. We also stole her from a hospital, and I'm praying that she doesn't want to go back. Uh, we aren't able to pay. One of the challenges is that we aren't able to pay because of CUNY and state rules the critical faculty in nursing and some of the other professions, what they really deserve. And so I'm always praying that they don't leave or they don't leave too soon because we know that the, the, the competitive market that's there 
really is an attraction that we often are not able to do. It's important as well to acknowledge not only the faculty who will help to make these things work, but the staff that is supporting the faculty and the chairs and the directors. And so to the secretaries who are just as excited about the success of the students, who are just as excited about the success of our faculty enabling the students to do well, I want to thank the secretaries who are very often invisible but getting all the important work done because when Jorge Santayana was talking, he was not talking about one category of persons. He was talking about everyone. And for me, it is just as important as recognizing what the president's role has been in this as is important to recognize what the secretaries do to help deliver, enabling us to get the job for the students. It is not what we say, it is what we do. And I want to end on a note of thanking the colleagues who were, able to, who were able to come here today. Because you also demonstrate some of what Santayana was talking about. You took some time out of your busy schedules, whether you, whether you were a person like Philippa who, actually, I think there's a clone of Philippa somewhere, because you see her every place, and if you look behind, Philippa's there, you look behind, Philippa's there. Uh, so I want to thank all the colleagues who were able, not just your colleagues, each of whom had something else to do, but members of our broader community, members of our family of York, for coming and help us celebrate this milestone, keeping in mind the importance of what George Santayana said. If you really want to know what people think, pay attention to not what they say, pay attention to what they do. Thank you. Thank you.